So the plant of the day is big blue stem. As you can see, the stalks, the, the feed stalks of this plant are massive. As I stand like next to them, you can see that they're tall as I am, if not taller. And times before there were cattle here or there were other animals here, these grasses could get 10 foot tall. The bison would come through and eat, eat them. And that's what kept them surviving and kept feeding them throughout, you know, years and years and years on their own. They would come here and they would they would eat all of this tall grass that has these immense root systems. Uh, Big Blue Stem has a 20 foot root system that goes down to the ground. And this plant, 12 foot normally, but can go up to 20 feet deep into the ground on these 50 year old plants, because these are perennial plants. So these things age um, kind of like trees. So these things, this one bunch grass right here will die back to the ground, but its root system will stay alive for the next year. And what it really likes is a fire to come through to kind of spark it to grow and tell it to grow, because these, these grasses need a fire. Um, and big blue stem acts as the canopy of many other grasses. So as this grass would cover this entire area at one point, uh, mixed in with other tall grasses like switchgrass and Indian grass, um, these would have towered above around eight to 10 foot tall, um, allowing these other small grasses like grama grass and um, other species to, to live uh, down on the bottom and all these wildflowers to grow up in between and the cracks where the sunlight could come in, creating this extremely thick, biodiverse, rich area. Um, some people, um, some studies have shown that some parts of the tall grass prairies are more biodiverse than the upper canopy and the lower canopy of the grasses and including the soil layer than some tropical rainforest. With all the species that live within the ground and the 20 foot root system of space where they can reside along with the tops right up here where where these layers, as these would be like the tall canopy forest or of the forest, and then the little blue stem would come in at the bottom as the secondary story. And then you have the Canadian wild rye right along with the little blue stem and, and silver blue stem. And then the switch grasses would come up um, and make these areas extremely well for nesting birds. And nesting ground birds like quail and meadow larks use the big blue stem as, it's, as an area to hide from predators while they're nesting. And if we um, keep allowing these areas to be taken over, they won't give as well as nesting places if, if turf grasses take over these areas like fescue and Bermuda. Um, these are extremely, extremely drought tolerant. They've survived some of the um, two year droughts. Like right now, this thing is producing seed and we've been having relatively low rainfall this year. And as you see, it's completely lush and green out here. And we've been in a drought for around two years. So, um, and we have been getting some participation, enough of the grass to grow. And as you can see the resilience because the ground moisture is very low at the moment. Um, it is extremely humid out here as well, um, which but this gives a great area because this is a subtropical region or um, a subtropical savanna um, where these tall grasses grow. And it, this species here grows all the way up into the mixed grass prairies and to the Dakotas and up all the way up into Canada. Um, but it has actually, it's now ra its range is relatively small, um, appearing as spots along the map, um, as these grasses have just been um, beaten up by uh, development and um, ranching and invasive species. Um, I'd just like to raise awareness about these beautiful purple seeded grass um, that also turn a very beautiful red color in the, the autumn um, after the first frost. It, it stays red for around a week and it it actually adds a nice touch to, you know, large ornamental gardens. Um, I think that we should bring some of these into our cities rather than bringing in our non-native turf grasses and help um, because of how tall they are and how well they shade the ground deep down with all the other grasses that are growing with them. These places um, offer a nice canopy on the soil that keeps the soil 80 degrees on a 100 degree day, even though that concrete on a 100 degree day can be 130 degrees. I'm just going to video for some scale of how tall these grasses are. I mean, here's me stand, standing up in them. And they grow about as tall as I am, a little bit shorter at the moment, but they're not fully grown yet. And they've also, you know, not been allowed to grow as tall as they fully can. But these are big blue stem. Here's some more example of what I was showing. Just showing how insanely thick these things can get. And I like to imagine the root systems underneath my feet and just how deep they go and 
all the systems going underneath and it makes me walk with a little bit more care. And I, I actually particularly normally walk around barefoot so not to damage too much. But um, so thanks for watching this video and see you next time.